world work. This is your choice, right? This one will go to this side of the same token that go to the test. For example, very simple. How does this work? Well, the first thing is intake of the fuel layer mixture. I mean, how is this, this air mixture is admitted into the cylinder? Well, we suppose that the engine is started already, and then the piston that is at the top is going down to the bottom. At the same time, this valve will open. Because the pressure here is less than the atmospheric pressure outside the engine, this will cause that air will flow through the carburetor and mixed with fuel, and fuel air mixture will be admitted or flow into the cylinder to fill the cylinder or the combustion chamber here. This is the intake extract and the intake event. After this, the intake valve will close and the piston will return back to the top. It means we move upward. What caused this one? We compress the fuel air mixture. The compression of the fuel air mixture will cause an increase of pressure and as well in certain increase in temperature as well. But you see that the volume is decreased. When this piston is almost at the top of its stroke, what's going to happen is the initial event. It means will be an spark that is produced with electric, electric pulse. We are going to study this later. This spark, what caused the, the spark? Well, it's a heat added to the hydrocarbon and oxygen that will cause the combustion. Combustion happened, and what caused the combustion? Well, one of the things that the combustion does is that release heat. This heat will expand the gases here in the combustion chamber. And this expansion of gases will push the, the piston down. And this is it's called power stroke or power event that you can see here. This stroke is very important because this is where juice, useful work or power is produced. When the piston, by the action, by the flow of the expanding gases, is going down, transmit this movement to the connecting rod and the crankshaft and the propeller. The propeller rotates this way. When the piston is coming near the bottom, the exhaust gas, the exhaust valve will open and start, uh, waste gases start moving out, exiting the cylinder. Then the piston reach the bottom and at the same time go upward again. In this way, what, what the action of the piston is to eject all these waste gases through this exhaust port to the atmosphere. Then this is the source, the stroke and the source event. The whole cycle is repeated one more time from the moment you start the engine to the moment you shut down the engine. This, this is what happens. This is the way it works. It means, for example, there is no spark, the engine will shut down. If there is no fuel air mixture as well, it means it's necessary that in order the engine operates, in sequence, intake, compression, power, and source. Intake, compression, power, and source. There will be two strokes per every 360 degree rotation of the crankshaft. That means that the four stroke will happen while the crankshaft will rotate, rotate 720, I think. No? Yeah. 700 degrees means two rotation of the crankshaft will be having four strokes. What is the stroke? What, what we call a stroke? A stroke is 
just the pistol, the pistol move from the top to the bottom of this stroke. It means here, when he, the piston is at the bottom, the piston is at the neatest position from the car shaft. When the piston is at the top, it's at the farthest position of the, of the, of the car shaft. When it's at the top, it's called, meaning many terminology, top dead center. Top dead center. When the piston is at the bottom, it's called bottom dead center. I mean, this is the way you have to explain how the aircraft reciprocating engine works, the concept. Okay? And the next, well, that is for a straw, I explained already, you know, and that is five events. The events are intake, ignition, power. Another event is compression and exhaust. It's good to, to that you know that the ignition event happens during compression and stroke. Because usually I don't know why. For example, here is, is the, the drawing, it's like a, the ignition is happening and the combustion and the expansion, but the ignition itself starts during compression and stroke. When the, the piston is almost at the top, initial happens at that moment. Then what happens, the expansion and everything that the forces of the piston, this is the power stroke. Um, well, the air is too low in the operation of the engine. It means all this operation, as you see, the engine, what does is breathing air and fuel together. It's breathing. Like a wheel breathe as well, and engine breathe as well. Breathe and exhaust. Waste gases. It means there is too physical law. The, the, the operation of the engine is based on this law. One is the Boyle's law, and the other is Charles' law. What state this law? The law is a state that there is a relationship between volume of gases and its pressure. And they are, the relationship is inversely. It means when the pressure increases of any gas, the volume of the gas decreases. And when the pressure decreases, uh, the volume of the gas increases. This is a spread here. For example, take a look at this picture. You will see that this is a like a small container or a cylinder. In here there is a gas. In, this is represent the piston. And above the piston there is weight. That represents the force that acting on the gas. This is the pressure and well this is the the temperature. In most cases will be called and the mass as well. What happens when here weight is increased? There is more force on the piston. That forces the piston to move down. And what happens? The volume will decrease. You see, volume of the gas. But you can see that the pressure are increased. What happens this one? When the piston is moving up during compression and stroke, the boil law is manifested there. The other law is the Charles law. This is Charles law. It is state that there is a relationship between temperature of the gas and the expansion of this gas. Also, that means the volume as well. But in this case, it's direct proportional. When you heat it up a gas, most of them, the tendency of the gas is to expand. It means it increases in volume. This happens even in, the, in our 
atmosphere. In a hot day, the column of air will be expanding. Okay? Then the level of pressure is changed. I think that you studied this one. If the temperature is meaning that it become the temperature decrease, it's become cold. That means that the spiral will be less. And all the level of pressure will have different altitude. That is the reason there is a model in the national standard atmosphere that is important for calculation of performance calculation. But this is not the real atmosphere we have. Because the real atmosphere is constantly changing in pressure, humidity, temperature, etc., etc. Well, this is the what Charles law. For example, here you see Kelvin degree. This is 400. And you see the level of expansion. In here, this was in this picture, the temperature is increasing. It means it should hit the gas. You have a crystal here. The expansion of the gas will act on the piston. It so means the volume will increase. When, when this happens during the operation, after the ignition of the spark, the fuel air mixture is there. And what happens? The spark right here. And what causes? Pushing the piston. And this piston. Transmit this movement to the collecting row and the propeller, and the propeller is mean. It represents the power of the And there is a cycle that when you want to explain how a piston engine works, a combustion, internal combustion engine, you can use the auto cycle. Auto cycle is supposed to be the one that creates this cycle. It means the physics and the mathematics, not just to explain how this works, is done by this man, auto. And this is the cycle. For example, this, this graph here, this chart, in this axis is pressure. So you send the pressure. And here is the volume. It's the same thing. Pressure and volume of gases. Gases is what is manipulated there in the operation of the engine. It's involved all the time. Gases, pressure, and volume, temperature, and the mass of, of, the, of, the, of, of these gases. From one to two is the intake stroke. During the intake stroke, the piston is going down. What happened to the volume? The volume of the gas is increased. And the pressure is almost similar or very near to the atmosphere pressure. Okay? That's the reason it's constant here. Because this is an ideal cycle. In the reality, it's not so. From two to three, what happens? You see that half increased the pressure and the volume has decreased. Well, this is the compression of stroke. Okay? From three to four, the volume is almost constant, while the pressure is increased. Well, this happens during the combustion process. That is the reason this cycle is called constant volume cycle. When happens the power stroke, that already these gases have been expanded and pushed down, what will happen is that the pressure starts decreasing and the volume starts increasing. You see this one from 4 to 5 in here. From power stroke. From 5 to 6, what happens? The heat radiation. This happens when the source valve opens. As soon as the source valve opens, we'll be in the chain of heat. The hot gases will lose temperature because the atmosphere is outside. Eh? They try to retain the, sa the same temperature of the atmosphere air. And what happens is that the volume almost don't change, but the pressure changes. Remember, pressure and temperature are my brother. When pressure increases, temperature increases. 
vorbește de Christ pentru și de Christ. Închie de preșe de Christ. Oare că putem păși ori de gases, unde sos ba oricând, nu le sta de Christ în asta. Then come the moment when the piston eject of this way gases to the exhaust valve. This is from six to one. The volume will be decreasing. Six, yeah, from six to one. And the pressure is almost gone. And it's almost the pressure, the outside pressure of the ambient air. This is this side. The work done on the air is represented by this side. Okay? The higher the area, the more work has been done on the air by the piston in the in the engine. Well, it means for you it's important to know the law and to, for example, decide to move all these letters that you know this element four to five is the power stroke and from two to three is the compression stroke. It means the relationship between the pressure and volume of the gases. Another thing to say to see here well is the engine fundamental and I think you you are you are ready we talk about this one. Another say to service, well, a cycle. Any, any engine operation is explained using a cycle. The piston engine we use the auto cycle, right? But as we see the operation of the gas engine, the, the cycle is not the auto, it's the Brighton cycle. If you want to see the operation of a diesel engine, it's the diesel uh, cycle, and so on. This cycle is what explains how the engine operates, taking into consideration the gas pressure and the volume. Um, a cycle is just a sequence of events that are repeated and have some sequence. We, another fundamental is the stroke. We defined this one already, and you should know what it is. But there is another that is the bore. The bore, for example, the bore is the inner diameter of the cylinder. You see here. Why this is important to mention this one? Because according to the stroke and the bore, this determines in some way how much fuel air mixture is admitted in here in this combustion chamber. According to how much is put in there, it determines how much is the power output of the engine. It means the higher is admitted in the cylinder, the higher the power output. It means that means that bigger cylinder usually produce higher power output of the engine. That's that's what was done in the old day. They manufacture and design very big cylinders, and they use a lot of cylinders. For what purpose? To create high power output. But you know that in aviation, the weight is something important. Then the higher, it means the, the bigger the cylinders are and connecting row and crankshaft, this is no good for aviation. Okay? Because this degrades the performance of, the, of any aircraft, made the scene difficult. Then nowadays, or in the modern time, what was done is to create a smaller cylinders, a smaller piston, and connect it to a smaller propeller, but they design faster engine. And it means faster engine means that the amount of power uh, a stroke in one minute go more higher. And, and in this way, it can be produced higher power as well. I express why this is, this is so. For example, 
the brain of power Brave of power is the power that the ending delivers to the profession. It's equal. That is a, a formula. Planck divided by 63,000. All 63 bonus. I describe what is this one. It means this is the power. Delivered to the proprietor. Planck is this dp, is the average pressure inside the cylinder. Average pressure inside the cylinder. In here. It means this will be direct proportional to the manifold absolute pressure you see in the aircraft when you are flying or starting the engine. That's the reason you have an indicator that says manifold absolute pressure. Because this manifold absolute pressure has to do with this average pressure and with the power output then you will produce. And this is the stroke. That's the reason I define. The stroke is important. It's defined as well the break of power. A is the area of the piston head. I mean, practically, if you have the area and you have the, the stroke, you have the volume of the combustion chamber. N is the number of power stroke in one minute. And K is the number of cylinders. All this one defines the break of power that is delivered to the propeller. Then what I explained, in the old days, all this part was done big, it's mean high. And then you were heavy, glancy, they produce power, but they have this disadvantage. Nowadays, this is not so. This is the, this is part is reduced, and what is increased is the speed, the amount of, of, of power stored in one minute, and this way, it can produce high power output as well. And it's possible to keep the, the aircraft with a smaller propeller. Better performance on the aircraft. Lighted engines, okay? Well, uh, another thing to say is to define the compression ratio. This is something very important as well. It's a sign fundamental. The compression ratio is the ratio of the volume above the piston when the piston is at the bottom of this straw. You see the, the, the piston is at the bottom. Or when the piston is at the bottom, the center, to the volume of the, of the air when the Above the piston, when the piston is at the top, you see here. Then in here there is like a C unit of volume, and here there is one. When you you do the ratio, what you get is six to one. Is the ratio. The higher the number of the compression ratios, the higher will be the pressure. The average pressure in the cylinder during operation of the engine, right? But this has some advantage. The higher is the pressure ratio, the more forces will be applied after combustion over the piston, and the higher will be the power output, using less fuel. This is this is the advantage of high compression ratio. But the amount of compression ratio to design the engine is limited according the material using the engine and the type of fuel. Because as I said, the more you compress the the more you compress the gas, you remember I said the more you compress the gas, what happens to the temperature? It rises. Uh -huh. Then 
That means if the pressure, the compression pressure is too high, the temperature will be too high, and this will have an effect in the material of the engine, in the whole material, and will be an effect on the fuel. It can cause detonation and pit mission. The thing that was in the in the assignment. This means you have idea what it is. Then in practice, I think a, a good compression ratio this will be like a 12 to 1. I mean, that cannot be too high. This, this is very high, but it could, it, it could not be, for example, 20 to 1 or something like that. If there is a new material to use, a new type of fuel, okay, the compression ratio can be in place. Better power output, better cooling characteristics of the engine as well, and the, 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 the safe of fuel, the fuel consumption of the engine increase. It's mean it's more it's more thermal efficient. That is the importance of the compression ratio. Okay? Uh, well, Right there, as a, as a homework, before I forget, why, why there is a um, tendency to build or to design piston engines with high compression ratio. What are you doing? This is like a water advantage of high compression pressure. Okay? So the question is, what are the advantages of high compression pressure? Yes, to use this one. Well, let's see. I explained about that something is important. You remember that we explained the... We explained how it works. How does it operate the engine? Okay. And I I have to say as well that this all operation is time and synchronized. Everything has to be synchronized. It's time and synchronized. This means all this valve will open and a certain amount of time and will be open, stay open for a certain amount of of time precisely cannot be changing. Why? Because when there is 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 the timing of the operation of the valves and the piston and everything at the ignition and all the event are not precise, it's not time, it's not synchronized, the engine sooner or later will will have poor poor performance. Or oh, it's overheating, or the power output is not okay, or will happen by friction, etc., etc. That is the reason I would like to show you the valve timing of the intake and the source. Valve timing. This is everything here is explained. What I explain here, the valve timing. For example. You see the, the picture good? Or not? Well, this is not the same like well, it's good. It's big. Well, let's explain when the intake valve will open according to this picture. It's important this one. Intake valve will open. 15 degree of crankshaft rotation before top center. That means that the piston won't be at the top. It was 15 degree crankshaft rotation before top center. Well, this 15 degree is some is an equivalence between crankshaft. Crankshaft rotation 
is equivalent and position piston position. It means for every angle of a shaft rotation will be an equivalent position of the piston. That's the reason it's just expressed that way. It's easy to explain using the crank shaft rotation that say if the piston is three inches or three millimeters from the top, this is no, no practical for explanation. Then it's, it's done that way. Then 15 degrees before a top center, the intake bar open. The piston reach the top and from the top it will move in down, right? Then at 15 degrees, can shaft rotation after the top center, the source bar will close. Okay? Then the piston continue going down, going down, reach the bottom dead center and return to the top. Then at 60 degrees after bottom center, the intake valve will close. What I wanted that you see that you see that the intake valve open and close, not exactly at the top of the intake stroke and at the end of the intake stroke. The intake valve open during the source, at the end of the source stroke, and will close during the compression stroke. We continue. Then the piston is moving up, and when the piston is in the position of 20 degrees before a top center, ignition happens. Mean, that means that the piston is almost at the top. Ignition will happen. The piston reaches the top, return to moving down. In this, when he reaches the top, the two valves are closed. Well, we, you know this one. In moving down, and when the piston is a 55 or same of gun shaft rotation before our bottom center, it means before our reaching the bottom, the exhaust valve will open to allow the initial gases to exit the, the, the cylinder. The piston go to the bottom and return to the top, well, I will repeat this one. This means the source valve is open, we push the, all, the, all the gases out, and when the piston is 15 degrees before a top center, in this point, the intake will open. As can you see, there is a moment where the exhaust and the intake are open at the same time. It's this, this time. This is what is called is valve overlap. Valve overlap. What is the purpose of, of valve overlap? Valve overlap. The purpose, what is, why is designed this valve overlap? Well, the purpose of one of our love is very simple. It's just to feed as much as possible the combustion chamber or the cylinder or the engine in order to, to, to try to produce the maximum output of the engine in any setting you have. This is one. The second is to better or to improve the cooling characteristic of the engine. Because as can you see, it's not only the intake, the intake open before the intake is thrown in the source. In this way, it starts flowing already a fuel air mission to, in order to feel as much as possible. And when it's closed, it's during compression. So already the piston is in the compression is strong and it's still this is open. It's closed here. 
But as can you see, the sauce, the sauce will close a little more late than the sauce. For what purpose? In order to the scavenging of gases is inside the cylinder as much as possible. This means to remove as much as possible the waste gases. Why? Because to avoid dilution. I mean, dilution is when the gases, the waste gases and the fresh char, they get together. Then the fuel air mixture, the amount that produce due for work or the power of the engine is decreased. That is the reason for the bar overlap. Right there as well, what is bar overlap and what is important in, in the area. The second question for the assignment. For the assignment. What, what is bar overlap and what is important? For example, here, you see, repeating, you know, the, the two here and then you start. The, this time, most valves are open, it's called valve overlap, right? And it's designed to increase the volumetric efficiency of the engine and the engine power output. Volumetric efficiency, that means that. In the volume that have the, the cylinder, it can be admitted as much fresh air mixture as possible. That is mean volumetric efficiency. This is equivalent like for us. You want to a Chinese restaurant and you ask for a fried rice, you can see that the package is small, the box is, but they compress a lot of rice there. When you go home, and you put it, it's a lot of rice. And this is exactly here. Volumetric, this, this, what the Chinese restaurant does, they are high volumetric efficiency in these boxes. Well, compared with the piston, it's the same. But instead of rice, is to put air there. As much as possible, uh, depend on the volume of the cylinder. And this is done with the valve overlap. And keeping both valve open during that time, both valve, allow more fuel air mixture into the cylinder and allow better scavenging, it's mean the removal of the waste gases, the source gases, from the cylinder. The result will be more power output produced by the engine and better temperature characteristic of the engine as well. Because the more gases stay there inside this cylinder, the more is the heat of this cylinder and the whole engine. I mean, this, this gas has to be removed as fast as possible and the better as possible. In order to overheat the engine. It means you know already what is the valve overlap. Well, after this one, let's see power and efficiency. I think if you study part of this one, and you agree with me that the thermal efficiency of the engine is worse inefficient. Why inefficient? Because the whole energy that is in the fuel, only one third produce a useful work to spin the propeller. It means a lot is wasted. Where? It's wasted in the source gases. 42%, almost the half, you see. The oil that is circulating in the engine takes it as well. The friction between part takes it as well. It means produce heat, but this heat is not, is not to produce uh, the spinning of the propeller. It's a, it's a loss as well. The air that is circulating for cooling the engine, take heat as well. All this heat that is removed from the engine and do not produce useful work or power is a loss. That means thermally, I 
I think in the end in that produce around 32% thermal efficiency, or maybe a little more, would be fine. But more than this, I, I don't think that this is obtained with the piston engine. It's an inefficient engine. Why is used still in aviation? Because relatively it's efficient at, it's efficient at low speed. And a small, I mean the range, short range and middle range of aircraft is okay. That is the reason. And the cost of maintenance on that are relatively low as well for it's you use it in this aircraft. That is the reason it's used. But as as, a, as an engine is no efficient. The gas turbine engine is much more efficient. Okay? Let's define because what is power and what is work. Well the work as can you see this man is half a car with we say again he's moving this car. For moving the car is necessary to use a force. But this force travels some distance. When you multiply the force times the distance, what you obtain is the work in physics. Work. But what is the power? Power is the ratio of doing work. It means how much work is done per unit time, in one second, in one minute, etc. Okay? That's the difference between work and power. Power always is considering the time. Work just force time distance. The work in the reciprocating in the reciprocating engine is, is even is the unit of work because there is a force in the piston, right? And this piston is moving from this distance. Inside the this cylinder with the piston movement, it can be calculated how much work it is done. Yeah, at the same time, can calculate the power of the engine. But the unit of power is horsepower. Horsepower. HP is equal to go power. Go power. And one of power is equal to 33,000 foot pounds per minute. It means foot, this is a meter, but this is a distance, and pounds. It's a unit of force. There is a Newton, but this is the this is what whole power it is. Any time it's produced 73,000 foot power of work in one minute, in one minute, it has been generated one whole power. This unit is too for comparison and for reference. What is the capability of the engine? What is the, 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 the work the engine is, is doing during operation, right? Remember, the unit of work is foot pounds. The unit of power is foot pound per minute. You see there is the fourth, the distance, everything. One of power is the amount of mechanical power used to to do 70,000 foot pound of work in one minute, or 50 or 550 foot pound of work in one second. It's the equivalent. A minute, a minute half, 60 seconds. You use the mathematics and you get the, the 550. Another unit of power is what? What and how power are equivalent? The difference is that how power are used for mechanical application and the what is used for el electrical application, but they are equivalent as well. Um, well, of the whole power produced by, by an engine, there is an amount of whole power that are produced inside the cylinder, while the heat 
if it is. The total hope power produced inside this cylinder is called indicated hope power. IHP is there. And it's equal to friction hope power and brake hope power. Then you can see the brake hope power is what is delivered by the propeller for spinning the propeller. This is what you will see in performance calculation and everything of fly, fly manual is brake of power. It's what interests you how, how much power the propeller is absorbing. The friction of power is caused by all the friction between parts. And as well, for example, to compress the fuel air mission when the piston is moving, to open and close the valves. And the desire of designing is to do the friction of power at the small as possible, low friction energy. For what purpose? In order to get a high drag of power. I mean, the, the whole heat that is produced at the cylinder, the whole heat is produced and the friction is low, the brake of power are almost near the indicator of power. That means that the thermal efficiency will be more high. When there is a friction, the power output of the engine will be affected. And the amount of fuel as well, the fuel consumption will increase as well. The temperature will increase. When they happen, for example, when the bearings or an engine are defective, the friction will increase. And what is the effect on this one? The power output will decrease, the temperature of the engine will increase. There is more 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 fuel to create one more power of the engine. And what it is? Because the friction of power has increased as well. The engine are known for creating friction and for creating whole power to a spinning a propeller. You remember that we studied bearings, yeah? The bearings is a component very important in any engine because the bearing are the one that reduce the friction between parts and, the, and reduce the wear of the parts of the engine as well. The components, the different components. Everything that rotates, for example, this chair should, should have a bearing there in the road. You know that the metal to metal, come, they are not wear too fast. That is the reason of the bearings. Well, after defining this one, you know the definition of all of this one. Well, we just define already what is brake of power and the, this one here, plan. For you it's important not to memorize the formula no, no memorize, you have there. What is important for me that you know what is the different factors of the formula, or variables. I mean, this one, the average pressure inside the cylinder, the stroke, the area of the piston head, the number of power a stroke. The number of power a stroke of any engine equal always will be the RPM of the engine divided by two. Remember this one. And the number of cylinders divided by this constant. As can you see, this constant is equal to the amount of foot pounds that foot pound or word that contain one whole power. That's the reason when you divide all this by this number, what you, you get the whole power. Well, there is a relationship between the pressure, the average pressure inside the, the cylinder, and the mean effective pressure. Okay? Mean effective pressure, well, this is a mathematic, it's like some sort of average, but more precise. 
and this brain, brain mean effective pressure has a relationship with the manifold absolute pressure. The manifold absolute pressure is the pressure of the fuel layer mission between the throttle valve, this quadruple control with your engine in the cockpit. When you are moving this control, what you are doing is opening or closing the valve. When the air passes this valve, well, between this valve and the intake port of the cylinder, the pressure of this gas here is what is the manifold absolute pressure. It means the higher the manifold absolute pressure, the higher the brain mean effective pressure, and the higher the pressure, the average pressure inside the cylinder, and the engine is supposed to produce for a given RPM more brake of power. That is the reason you have the RPM and the manifold absolute pressure because both of them visually define you how much power the engine is producing. Um, well, it means, as can you see, there are five factors that affect the power produced by the engine. The bore, the straw, the number of cylinder, the engine RPM, and the pressure of air entering the cylinder. These three are contraction factors. You, you cannot do anything. One the engine is built. This is will be it's built in. You, nobody can change. But in, during the operation of the engine, the engine RPM can be changed. And the pressure of air entering the cylinder as well. The pressure of this air can be changed, changed in the position of the throttle valve, and you have a control there, right? And the, the ending RPM can be changed in case you have a, an aircraft that is equipped with, um, with a governor governor that can change the blade angle of the propeller. Because when the blade angle of the propeller is high, the load to the engine is high as well. The RPM can be, re can be reduced. And when the blade angle of the propeller is small, the engine RPM will increase. I mean, with the, in a contact speed propeller aircraft, with the throttle, you control the manifold absolute pressure. And with the, the propeller, you control the engine up here. If the aircraft is fixed with one fixed propeller, the only you have is one control, this is the throttle. And then you increase and you decrease, open the, the throttle and close the, the throttle, and the ending RPM is, is the indicator you have as a power for this type of, of engine. Uh, for example, you can read here, in an engine equipped with a fixed pitch propeller, the throttle control the RPM. This engine does not normally have manifold pressure gauge. The propeller determines the resulting manifold pressure. So in this fixed angle, have only one manifold pressure and that's it. On an engine equipped with a contact speed propeller, that is, I think this one is most common, the pilot can vary the propeller pitch to control the RPM of the engine. And the throttle control the manifold pressure. I mean, with this control, this two, is what you set the power of your engine. This is what I wanted to say. You can read by yourself this power rating. rating. In here is the pi of the inefficiency, how efficient is the engine is thermally. You see 45 loss out of the sauce. Friction loss is 10%, 4% oil. And the air, because cooling and remove heat, is 10% as well. This is approximate. And the useful word is only set in one portion. Well, 
É... There is fact, I mean, we saw power already, and this, there is a lot of factors that define the, the power output, the engine. I'm going to mention them and explain very general. For example, the thermal efficiency, the volumetric efficiency, the mechanical efficiency, the piston displacement, the compression ratio as well. The ignition timing, all this, the propulsion efficiency. But I, I want to find another file that is simple to understand. Hold on a minute. Let's see in this Efficiency. What efficiency is? Efficiency, try to understand. This is one part that is, is a little bit, you have to abstract to know what it is. Efficiency is just the ratio of the output of any system or any thing that we do to the input. Okay? The engine input is fuel and air. And the output is mechanical energy. It means RPMs or thrust for moving the aircraft. Then everything is based, when you see efficiency, is related with the fuel, because all the energy is coming from the fuel. Efficiency, for example, is energy output and energy input. Amount of power developed by the engine and the amount of energy supplied to the engine. And this is the way you have to see the efficiency because it's a little bit confusing. There is different efficiency, you know, the thermal efficiency, the volumetric efficiency, the mechanical efficiency and the propulsion efficiency. For example, the thermal efficiency, well, you know that it's inefficient as well, is there is a formula here, break of power multiplied by, by this constant, divided all this one. This, when you, the break of power of the engine multiplied by this one, what you get is the work that is generated by the engine to spin the propeller. When you divide the pounds of fuel consumed per minute, it means it is like a full flow, and you multiply it 2,000, uh, 20,000. This represents, in this case, you will see there, is the, the heat content. This is a BTU. BTU means this is thermal unit. One BTU is the heat that is required to, to increase the temperature of one pound of water from 60 degrees Fahrenheit to 61. This means it's an amount of heat. Then, one gallon of gasoline for the piston engine has or one pound, sorry, has a, a, a heat value of 20,000 20, BE. This multiplied by 778. Well, each PDU is a heat, right? It's capable of developing 778 full pound of work. That means when you multiply everything here, you, you realize that the fuel that is consumed by the engine has the, the capability to produce certain amount of full pound of work. This is potentially, but in reality, what it produced is this one. 
the, multipli the multiplication of rate of power by this. Then, when you compare the main ratio, you calculate the thermal efficiency. It means the 31 or 32. It means they are different, this number. Mean in theory, the fuel is capable of doing a lot of work, but in reality, the engine produces much less than was calculated uh, theoretical. And why? Because in the conversion of energy, there is losses. That is the bit. In here, it's explaining everything about the BTU. The BTU performed this one, what I repeat this one. The volumetric efficiency was explained as well when I explained it's just the volume of the char taking into the in the char is synonym of fuel and admission. At atmospheric pressure and temperature divided by the piston displacement. Well the piston displacement is just you have a cylinder. You have a cylinder, right? In here. And this piston will move from the top. This is the piston. From the top to the bottom, right? In this movement, in this stroke, he will sweep some amount of volume of air. This volume of air, that this means it's, it's really the volume of the combustion chamber of the cylinder is what is called this plane. This is it. Then when you compare how much volume of fuel emission was put inside the combustion chamber of the cylinder, you are, what you get is the volume efficiency. Mechanical efficiency is the ratio of the brake whole power given to the propeller divided by the indicator of power. This is clear. I mean, the heat was created in the cylinder. How much of these powers both produce a mechanical movement on the propeller, the brake of power? This is. And the proportion efficiency, in this case, is the, the amount of whole power that were produced that will deliver to the, prop to the propeller. Let me explain this one, the, the propulsive. In here you have the engine, suppose, and in here you have the, the propeller. Okay? Well, this engine, what he delivered to the propeller are brake of power. Brake of power. And the propeller was produced, the thrust. Thrust. But what happened is that the old brake of power that was delivered to the propeller, no all of them are converted into thrust. That means the proportion Efficiency is the amount of whole powers, the brake of power that produce trust. Because as well there is losses. The losses are coming from the efficiency of the propeller, the propeller efficiency. It means they hide the propeller efficiency. They hide the propulsion efficiency of the engine propeller combination. But if you put, if you use a very good engine with very poor in performance propeller, the transport, the transport power, the propulsion efficiency of the combination of the engine and the propeller is very low. This means the engine produce a lot of power and the speed of the aircraft is slow. This is is low because the proposed efficiency is, is poor, is, is, is not too high. That, that is a very important term.
And that means it's a proportional efficiency is low. That means that you have to use a lot of a lot of fuel to get certain speed. That is what means this one. Right? What time is it? Oh. And what time is it? Uh, 45. 45. 45, okay. Hold on. Well, and then the, the factor of affecting a drug reciprocating any performance. I go to, this is, this is something you have to know by memory, because you are fine. And you are all the time in relationship with, with the engine. The engine is why it's, it's the heart of the aircraft. When the engine is not operating properly, you're gonna sweat. Sweating, it's a problem, yeah? He is the one that put you there, and you come back with the engine. Then, factor affecting like that is to get the engine performance, you have to learn what I did. Manifold pressure. The altitude of the aircraft. I mean, a different altitude your engine will perform differently. It's not the same at ground level that at 80,000 feet. The, out, the power output will change. I mean, the performance will change. The fuel air ratio. If you, for example, take off with your mature reach and you continue flying with the mature reach all the time, maybe this, you don't save fuel and maybe there is a happen could happen, fuel establishment for your engine. Happens in real life. The, the pilot, I think they have not the, the knowledge or was not aware of this one. He didn't reach a property properly and he realized that he had no more fuel. It means the engine shut down. The engine was okay and the fuel air uh, mixture was incorrectly set. That's important. The ramp pressure. Well, the ramp pressure is depend on your speed. The higher the speed, the more pressure will have your, your intake air. It means the air that is enter, entering the engine. And that means higher pressure is good because increase the fuel air mixture that go to the cylinders. More fuel air mixture produce more power. Carburetor air temperature. Well, the carburetor air temperature, the carburetor air temperature is too low. What could happen is that the carburetor get ice, and the fuel air mixture, which means the air to the engine, can be shut down, blocked. That is the reason you have in the aircraft a carburetor heat to use when humidity high, especially, and the temperature as well is low. But remember the temperature in the carburetor because even with sun, you can get outside, you can get carburetor icy. It's the humidity, it's very high. We are going to explain this one when we we'll start a fuel system. The water vapor pressure, when well, water vapor pressure below 5,000 feet affect the engine performance of the piston engine. That you can reduce the power up to 12%. Why? Because the more water the air ha has, the less dense is the air. Then low dense air will mix with less fuel. And the fuel air mixture amount is less, the power up to them will be less as well. A source part pressure. Well, the source part pressure is the pressure that is in the source for on. They are always the highest pressure, but not could be or should not be too big pressure above the atmospheric pressure. Because in this happen, you remember there is the cylinder and the source here, and these gases have to move out to the atmosphere. 
in here is in the exhaust part. There is a back pressure, the gases cannot move easily. Cannot, it means the scavenging is not good. And this will decrease the volume and the efficiency of the engine. And decreasing the volume and the efficiency decrease the power of the engine as well. The air temperature is clear. The hotter the air, the air is less dense. Okay? Less dense air, the tendencies change the performance of the engine as well. Produce less power out to the engine. And the air pressure as well. When the pressure, for example, Miami here is, I think it's, what is the, uh, the altitude of the airport? Miami? Seven, seven, seven feet, yeah? And in Mexico? Yeah, the pressure in one side is different than here. I mean, the same aircraft is we be taking off from Miami. It's not the same like in Mexico, right? Because the pressure is less, you have less fuel air mixture or mass airflow to the Good. Well, in there is explain all these factors. This part of the picture I don't explain because in the introduction I explain this one about the four, the more important power picture, the best economic picture, the best rich picture, and the best rich picture. I explain the important of the, you will start with this one. In here is the calculator of the soft pressure and everything. With this one, we finish the piston engine, aircraft piston engine, and next Tuesday we start with the turbine engine. With similar thing, how does it work, the component. But I, I think that we are going to be faster, but only there is a contraction topic that is very expensive. I have to explain each part of the that's the point, and you have to learn this one also. If there is no question, you can learn And please.